Wake me up when it's over, will you? I will. Oh. Getting too old for this. Close that door. Oh, screw the VIPs. <laughs> Rich bastards. He's, he's getting a draft the on his Proletariat I'm talking to. I love a hump you got. Yeah, I know that. I'll just ignore him in a minute. <laughs> How you doing, Reese? I'm very good, sir. I'm Is very a new good. book out yet? <laughs> Is it out yet? August the 3rd. August the 3rd. Oi! Oi! Relax. They'll be embarrassed enough in a minute and they'll sit down really fast. They should be embarrassed. They're late! Oh, you're hiding in the back. You do realise I can see you better there. There we go. All right, what's going on? What's going on? We were going to wait about 10 minutes because we've got... But well, we can't now, obviously. Oh, we'll take the extra 10 minutes. You never know what Let's he's going to do to me. Let's take the extra 10 minutes, you right? You never know what you're going to do to me. You get some decent get... questions. Yeah. Can... Maybe. I don't know with this lot. <laughs> what's it like working with Jensen and Jared? <laughs> <laughs> what's it like working with Misha? At, at the moment, lonely. Lonely, yeah. <laughs> Very. Why See, are you standing? <laughs> if it's any consolation, I always feel like I should be standing as well when Mark yeah, comes in. It's, it's just, pretty good. I never know. I never know. So, you know the best thing is, don't you? As much as I love hanging out with you, and it is a yeah. lot of fun hanging out with you, um, questions are the thing that make this work. Sure. So, where's the microphone or is somebody walking around doing it? We've got, yep. Yeah. You walking around in doing place. it? Now, are you going to be athletic and actually move out of a 10-foot area? Whoa. Oh, that's impressive. There look you go. That. Look at that caveman go. That's, that's, that's winged feet. Sorry, life on Mars. It was a joke. Um, oh, you're leaving? Oh, no, you're sitting down. God damn. It's like if you went, you know, if you die... And you have a funeral, you always wonder like who'd come to your funeral. This is how I find out. <laughs> what do you want? Why do you want Reese? What were you gonna say? About stuff. Oh, what stuff? I wanna know. <laughs> we, they need to know. <laughs> what was that, Reese? Good. We're fine. We're, We're good. good. We're good. We're good. We'll, we'll just go long. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Yeah. And we can just make fun of everyone who's late coming <laughs> in the room. So who's asking a question? Reese, you got any questions? You want to start me off? I, I am I am very fine to ask you. I just wanted to say that basically, even though you take the mickey out of me every time we come here, do you know what? Walks in a guy, he goes, Reese, love you to see you, and walks straight in. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you expect at this point? But I also wanted to say publicly, you are the nicest, kindest person. Honestly, what you've been doing this last month, thank you so much for everything. <laughs> no, you've been, this man is a star. So you see the Crowley aspect underneath it all. Well, this lot, this lazy lot who come in late. The trouble is, if I, if I go to a convention and I don't give you a bit of Crowley, everybody goes, there's something wrong with him. So if I don't abuse you lot, it just, it doesn't work. It's like terrible. Hey, yeah. There's no problem. How you doing? You good? Look at this lot. Lazy bastards. Late. I mean, this is, this is why Britain is in the state it's in. It's just nobody wants to work or sit down in a convention. What? Let them sit wherever. I would. I would let them do that. Have you given up now? Yeah, you've given up. That's good. I like that. I love throwing little hand grenades in the mix there. You guys doing all right? Look, I I've said this a bunch of times. Anyone here that's new to a convention? Anyone that's brand new? All right. This is a very unconventional way of doing a guest talk because I get really bored sitting on stage. Much as I love Reese and he can ask great questions and he knows about my career and everything else because he's well studied and knows his stuff. Sit down. 
the whole thing about it is, what's weird about this is, the reason why I come, stop talking. <laughs> I'm talking here. The, re the reason why I come to conventions, who do you come as? No, you, blue tie next year. Who'd you come as? Who? Cat, who's that? Cass, never heard of her. <laughs> never heard of her. terrible costume. You know that's tantamount to child abuse. Yeah, you see, you could dress nicely, come as Crowley, had a nice suit. You'd have the respect of all the crowd. But no, you come like shambolic Columbo. <laughs> Mark, or Constantine with the wrong tie. Mark. Yeah. You, Mark. I didn't get a five. He's blanked me. On the me. stage. He's blanked me from a five there. Anyway, I was going to say something important, but this is more fun. So, hey, yeah. Samantha Smith. <laughs> What are you doing here? <laughs> anyway, I was, just, I, was, I was just having fun messing around. Don't knock over my tea. use it. Don't knock over my tea. Hey, Sam. Hi, where are you? I'm here. <laughs> so anyway, I was going to tell you this. You, a, lot, a bunch of you guys are new, right? So you wonder, why do we come to conventions? And it looks like a sort of big monetary exercise, and there's a lot of people and stuff, and everything goes real fast. You know, the signing is just a sort of physical memento of the fact that you've been here, right? And the photo ops are even faster, well, for some people, uh, are even faster, and there's even less time to, it, to interact. But the reason I'll tell you why I come to conventions is to see your faces, because we make television with 150 of our friends on a set, and we hope you're going to like it, and then we give it to you, and they put music on it, and they do all that stuff with it, and effects and all that stuff. And we, we don't actually know, we don't come to your house and watch it with you, so we don't have an audience. And I come from live music, and I come from live theatre. And in that genre, and in that type of performance, I get to see your face, and I get to see whether I'm making you nervous, or whether, <laughs> whether I'm making you laugh, or whatever. But it's, there's an interaction, there's an organic interaction. So for me, the idea of doing a guest talk is the greatest thing in the world because you actually get to see your audience and you get to be really mean to them. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's the greatest thing. And the reason why I travel the world and do what it is that I do is because I get to see your faces and I get to actually... Some of you I know and some of you, of course, are brand new. But we don't get to see our audience in television. And this is why conventions are the greatest thing in the world. We all come. It's also, funnily enough the safest, the most inclusive, the most, the least predatory, the least judgmental place you could probably be on the face of the earth right now. It's kind of amazing. It's, like, it's a great place to have a panic attack. <laughs> about 2,000 people will come will crowd you and then one person will go, stand back. We got it. You know, I mean, it's, it's a lot of like-minded souls. I'm going to ask a question, a personal question, if anyone's listening. Uh, anybody here identify having a diagnosed mental health disorder? See? So if you're having a hard time with the amount of people here, or you're having a hard time with the noise or whatever it is that's going on, please understand you are not alone. There is a lot of people here for which this is anxiety inducing and me walking around and shoving microphones in your face and stuff makes it even more anxiety inducing. But the fact is, it's, it's a very loving and very kind and very safe space to be. If you're having a hard time, please let somebody know. You're not alone. If, you, if you're not doing well, please let somebody know. You will get some help. It's one of the kindest places to be. So that being said, I'll shut up now. How are you doing, Sam? You got a mic? Hi. Good. Hi. I'm Hi, your warm-up act. What? I'm your warm-up act. <laughs> Never. This was, was this your chair? Dance. <laughs> I, I said Sam could sit in here because I didn't think you... Uh, you yeah, uh, race, yeah, race. I didn't no think problem. you were coming back. <laughs> well, we've got pretty much full house coming in, haven't we? Yeah. Bravo. Do you like questions, Sam? I think you like questions, don't you? I do. I don't, I don't do well just spitballing very no. well. Other than to say how grateful I am for all of you. So thank you. Truly, and I, I, I think you were saying something similar that... Probably. Probably. I, I, I say a lot of things. I just copy whatever Mark says. 
um, that us coming here and it's, it's our way to be able to say thank you in person to the fandoms um, for the support. Because with, if nobody watches our show, we don't have a job. Is the way that works, usually? Um, is it really a job? Is it really? I mean, when you're doing it, you don't really realize what it means or what it... Only in as so much as it's, it, it is the, time, the way that I spend my time that ends up paying for my bills. Right, but, but in the context is we never know how long it's going to go for. We never know whether it's going to be successful or not. We never know what the reaction is yeah, going to like be. Yeah, it's like gigging. You like yeah. give a gig at a time. You're jobbing along. There's no one who's had a lifelong acting job. You have a career, but the jobs are like that earthquake meter. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But um, that's, that's the phenomenon that is supernatural, is that nobody ever expected... 15 years. I mean, you were dead in, what, episode one? <laughs> first 90 I mean, seconds, Mark. First 90 seconds of episode one. And I mean, that's like, yeah, welcome to the show. <laughs> I was the first person you see first death on the show. Um, second most deaths on the show. Uh, total. Only to that one where Dean died more times than there were seasons, I think. Like, there's... <laughs> Um, but you never know. But you never know. When we come to these, this is when we actually find out, I think, more than anything else, is when we know, we get to find out a little bit of what it means for you. And that is, the, I think, the greatest gift of all, is that, as I said, we don't get to see our audience when we're making television. We don't get to see it when it's broadcast. When we come to a convention, it's, it's sort of completing the organic performance circle. So what you give back to us is way more than I'm going to give you. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I, I can say here at Wales Comic Con, we've been waiting for a Winchester, yeah, for a long, long time. And you guys, you guys are like buses. We've been waiting, and then two of you turn up at the same time. I mean... I've never cared about the Winchesters myself. <laughs> Do you you know, never you know, know that. You know, Jen, Jensen and I, we were having a conversation once, flying, and... Uh, I postured the idea that the reason why Crowley and Castiel are so possible, uh, so, well, so liked, I would say, um, is purely and absolutely because they love the Winchesters. So if you, if you watch Supernatural, you're watching Supernatural because you love this, the, the boys. That's it. If you don't... Well, I mean, and Mary. Well, no. <laughs> Not really. I mean, they skipped you out for most of the middle. <laughs> So the show went on fine without you. But they talked about me all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Thank you. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. It's like, it's like well, she's dead, so that's probably going to be it. But, but the, truth, the truth is, is, you know, spin-offs, whatever. I mean, with all the endeavors, and I love my friends working and everything else, the root of it has always been, the core of it has always been the Winchesters and the fact that the audience loves the Winchesters and their journey and good versus evil and, you know, demons and angels and... And, and families thicker than motor oil or whatever the hell that is. We always keep farting. I can't remember all the, all the slogans. But, but the, the truth of it is, it's their love of the Winchesters. And what's interesting is why Crowley and Castiel are important is because the audience can live vicariously through their love of the Winchesters. And it doesn't really work if we weren't. So, I mean, I started out as an antagonist in some ways, then I end up as an ally, and then... I don't know, it keeps changing or whatever, but, but it's still the love of the Winchesters is the, whole, is the whole game, I guess. For sure. I mean, and that extends even to other Winchesters. No. It does. <laughs> well, not for me. No, not for you. No, no, no. The audience loving anyone that loves Mary, it's because yeah. she's their mom, not yeah. because she's Mary, which was very clear... My third episode, Back to Life, when I chose to go take some time away and everyone was like, dead to me. She is dead to me. I'm like, it was a break. It's it. Come on. Um, but no, I hurt their feelings, and then suddenly she was persona non grata. Um, which was fine, because Mary was not brought back to be the one in the back seat going, where are we going? What are we hunting today? Do we want some bacon? Like, I'll clean the, I'll make cookies and clean the I thought that bunker. was my job. Correct. I'm on the back seat going, where are we going? <laughs> right. I'll make exactly. cookies. So, I mean, Mary was brought back to be a little bit of a 
uh, I was gonna say frog in the blender, but I don't know why they was frog in the that. blender. <laughs> no. Wow. A, a, a fly in the soup. Frog in the blender is way more interesting. <laughs> That's the answer to what's green and goes red at the touch of a button. A frog in a blender. Just so you know. <laughs> uh, I got another one. I'm jet lagged. What's 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 red and sits in the corner? A naughty strawberry. <laughs> what was it? I don't want to. What's orange? And sounds like a parrot. A carrot. <laughs> English jokes are the best jokes in the world. Yeah, what's brown I and sticky? I thought maybe you got these from your What's daughter? brown and sticky? A stick. <laughs> Do not tell these to Jared. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've told him this for years. He's like, oh, that's great. Hey, <laughs> <coughs> Sherp. Puts them in his Rolodex in his head. And then he, asks them to me, and I'm like, I don't know. He's like, <laughs> He hit me on the way into his table. Just like full shoulder into my chair. I'm like, Jesus, I forgot how strong that boy is. It's ridiculous. Well, that's why we, you know why we called him Moose, don't you? Well, we had all these insults that have been going on for, for years. So we had giraffe, muppet. What do you want? Good. Shuffle and make friends so we can let some people in. Squeeze. Scoot up next to some other people Squeeze. so we've got spaces. Any empty seats. Just Any spaces, make more spaces for the people who need to come in. So, oh, look how nice you are. See? See, that's good. What are good look. people? Well, they're afraid of me. That's this what. was any other, <laughs> anything else, then they'd be like, I didn't hear that. No, so anyway, as I was saying so before, so rudely interrupted. Thank you. Is that, the, so we called him, hey, you can do it quietly. <laughs> they're making friends. I'm always making friends. But, um, They're making friends. But what happened was, it's, it's Gigantor, Giraffe, Mop-Headed Lumberjack, you know, Jolly Green, all this. It wasn't really sticking. And then, you know, he has the most ridiculous upper body strength of any human being on the face of the planet. He's like, he flips a 400-pound tractor tires all day and stuff like that. But in my opinion, he has very skinny legs. <laughs> Don't tell him that. He gets mad at me and tries to kick me with them. And they have exceptional reach. Yeah, no, he does. Well, I can get my knee up to my face. So he, he was like, well, you move really fast for an old man. <laughs> but so there I am in the burnt out mansion. I'm sure you weren't watching the show. You were dead at that point. And Did I burn down the mansion? N no. Okay. They burned down my, they ate my tailor as well, which was really bad. Um, they burned down my mansion and, and Dean's sitting on the burnt out couch with a beer. And I literally went, where's your moose? And he goes... Oh, he just went out to blah, 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 and that was it. Because a moose is a two-ton car driver killing machine on sticks. And the <laughs> sticks are just long enough that your car hits the sticks, they fold up, and the two tons comes through the window. And that's pretty much Jared. How, how did Jensen become a squirrel? Well, because of moose and squirrel. Oh, and... Well, it actually was moose and sure. not moose. Because I had a date with Kim's character... And of course, the audience knows that, that I'm going to kill her. And they're like, ah! And she has no idea who I am. And she's like crying, and I'm holding her hand, and we're on a date. It's hysterical. Right, right. It's awful. It was so mean. And then the phone rings, but it's Robin really going, ring, ring. You're right. So I look at the phone. I think it's really funny if I pick it up and I go, this is the king. And I know it's, it's, it's Dean. And Dean's like, oh, yeah, don't kill my friend. Oh, yeah, bloody stick of the motor oil, whatever it is. Whoa, 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 whoa. And, I'm, and it's mean and all that stuff. So when it got to post-production, first of all, they dubbed in a ringtone. Guess what my ringtone is? Which I didn't hear on set. I That's like big butts and I can't lie. <laughs> and of course, I completely ignore it because it doesn't really exist. Right? Look, and I look at the phone and they did an insert and the insert said, not moose. I was like, this is genius. And then, of course, then you get squirrel. And that basically makes me and Ruth, Boris, and Natasha. <laughs> so that's, that's the entomology of that. Kind of fun, though. I like it. Oh, cool. Got any questions? <laughs> Where am I oh, sitting? God. If you've got questions, put your hands up. Run, run Forrest, run! This, the umbrella was of, uh, 
full force questions. Some of these were like, well, if I have to. It's some interdimensional sword. I get worried about the lighting. That's, uh, no, they've got, they've got microphones over there. They're running around. Hello. You may stand. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Mother. Uh, <laughs> it's an incredibly important question. I need to know. Um, what, what's your favorite cheese? Cheese? Here we go. <laughs> sit down. Mind your business. Put your sword away. You may sit. It's okay. Uh, that favorite is a very cheese. good question. I your like cheese. No, you, my favorite cheese is your cheese, so I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> what? What? Um, <laughs> What's your favorite cheese? I like any kind... Uh, St. Angel right now is my favorite, because um, off the top of my head, but anything like that, like a little bit, a little bit bitey, but creamy in the middle, and then I put it on... Like um, a crocodile. That have, um, <laughs> what? A little bit bitey like a crocodile. A little, a li like a crocodile, sure. Like goat or cow or raw, or what? A uh, goat and sheep. Mix goat and sheep because it's sharper. Uh huh. With like a with a rind, and then you can put it on like a really crispy cracker that has like my favorite has cacao and cranberries in it, cherries in it. It's a very specific answer. And <laughs> <laughs> I've got any real questions. <laughs> I've got a joke for you. Cheese is important, Mark. Yeah. Speak. I've got a joke for you to tell Jared. What? What's black and white but red all over? <sighs> Penguin rolling down a hill. Zebra and a uh, None with sunburn. Newspaper. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of it. Newspaper. Yeah, newspaper. Newspaper. <laughs> newspaper. Could have been many of those things. Yeah, no, I know. It's, it's like, God. Not Are a you? frog. Yeah, great. Ne next question. Oh, that's some steps you get. Sprinting around with that microphone. It's like a steeplechase. <laughs> Hi. Call her a horse. <laughs> no, just the course. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> um, if you could make a demon deal, what would you like do it for? What would you want? <laughs> You're asking me? Both of us. Off you go, Sam. I wouldn't, because I want to get what I want without consequences. Ooh. That goes against my entire job on the show, doesn't it? <laughs> I am the consequences. Down with the patriarchy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not run by a patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Next. Come on, some decent. Hi. Um, if you ha if did you ever steal anything from any of the sets? If so, what was your favorite object that you stole? What did you steal? Allegedly, thank you. That's what she said. <laughs> I actually didn't steal anything, although I wanted to. I couldn't have gotten them home. Like, I wanted my machete. Very useful in your part of the world. I mean... It was slicing like, cheese. Yes, yeah, slice, slicing the, the St. Saint Angel cheese. Um, I wanted my boots, but ultimately, I already had motorcycle boots, and they were going to be a little bit hard to. There was, I think, there was only two pairs, and I think they were going to be hard to like put in my pocket. Um, but they ended up sending me a couple things. They sent me the original nightgown. They sent me the uh, my set chair with my name on it, which I have no idea what to do with. I guess I might put it on the wall somewhere. And then they sent me a couple like jackets and some flannels. Um, I didn't have any one specific thing. You know, like, if I had been Crowley, I would have wanted the throne or, like, one of the black suits or... Um, black suits were mine. If I had been you, I said. No, they were mine. Oh, they were yours? Yeah, it's my tailor. Oh, you brought them in. And my coats and my tie. All right. Well, I have all those. 
I didn't want to wear any of my clothes because my character spent as much time bloody and in the mud as she did not. So I was like, I'm not... And so I also had to have triple and quadruples of almost everything. Are you going to wear the nightgown to one of the shows? I have, um, and done pictures in them for charity. Oh, fantastic. That's brilliant. It no longer has on the fire? blood mark across... What? On fire? <laughs> not on fire. Not on fire. Although I want Schmelke to make a, like a fire backdrop. Oh, yeah, you could definitely do that. That'd mm -hmm. be brilliant. You just go into the camera. Right, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I just, I mean, I would have liked one of the cars. Too late. I know. Um, I, oh, I have the, bra the Enochian brass knuckles. Ooh. They're nice actually one. made of, like, plaster. Plastic knuckles. Because they have versions of everything, right? Which you all know from watching that outtake of when... In, in that Lebanon episode, when Jared was supposed to smash the pearl, and it was supposed to be made of paste, instead, they used the real pearl that was made of stone, and it almost killed Jeff. <laughs> so this is why there are duplicates of all the different prop items, and you have to make sure you use the correct There's a great one, one from Battlestar, when... Um, if you haven't seen it, I really don't care about spoilers at this point. It's been about 15 years. Um, but when Starbuck dies, um, Eddie Ormos, the Admiral, in his, in his quarters, has a beautiful sailing ship. Mask like model. Like in, in, in a giant bottle? No, 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 no. Just On its own. Okay. So about you know, three and a half feet long, three feet high. Uh, and he decided in the middle of a take to just destroy it. He just smashed it against the wall. The trouble was it was a rental. And one of a kind. $50,000 rental. It was an amazing take. <laughs> but in one. Yeah, you don't get a second one of that. There was a lot of people trying to glue it all back together again for about two weeks. It's kind of brilliant, though. Not Lego, not, not Lego. He thought we owned it and we didn't. Even if you owned it. Oh, it was just, a, well, it's a pretty heavy show, but. Right. He just went, what? And, it was and like, the prop goes. The prop guy just goes. <laughs> 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 so Starbuck guy. and the prop guy died in that episode. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, it was funny. Starbuck, but yeah, we had a Starbuck lot of those. came back, right? Hmm? Starbuck came back like. And now you're really giving spoilers. <laughs> that was 14 and a half years ago. <laughs> Well, yeah, and I'm, I was the president, so that was even better. That's right. I, have to, I want to go it's a watch Doll again. It's an I amazing just, it's show. It's hard to find. It's not on, like, Netflix and stuff. I'll or it wasn't, I'll, is it now? Do you want to? I'll give you the DVDs. Please give me the DVDs. I'll give you the DVDs. I'll give, give you the Blu-rays. You can watch all the deleted scenes. We don't have deleted pieces. Can I play Blu-ray on an Xbox? Yeah. yeah, you can, can't you? Okay, because that's our only DVD player at this point. Okay. Do so I have to send you a Blu-ray player as well? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. <laughs> And a 65-inch television to watch it on. It's the right answer. This show is getting Mark. expensive. It's a lovely favor. Thank you. <laughs> it's a, what? It's Mother's Day. Come on. It is? Where? In, in America yeah. tomorrow. I'm not in America. The DVDs are. Yeah. I can, I can make this logic work, Mark. Okay. <laughs> Hi, questions? Um, I have a, a comment and a question. Um, first of all, my comment is that Supernatural really means a lot to me. Um, it's, it's been part of my life for such a long time. Um, I did get to see you both earlier. I'm so sorry for almost stabbing you with my crown, Samantha. Um, <laughs> I recovered. <laughs> She's good at coming back from the dead. <laughs> Um, and then my question is, um, were there any particular scenes that you guys found the most fun to uh, film? There were so many. I did enjoy... We didn't have many scenes together, but they were usually fun. Because like, um, it's me. Well, duh, yeah. Um, that one with the crazy man with the long... Uh, Jared? It wasn't a sword. <laughs> <laughs> He was there. Um, no, it was a Prince of Hell who had like a stabby thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tried to kill... Jerry. Me. Yes, and he tried to kill um, Cass. And then you... Richard Spate directed that one. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Yes, the, I, I was like... When my stunt double went through the barn doors and hit the tractor. Correct. Right? To which I looped 
and <laughs> scream afterwards. No. And I decided to put the, the, the whiniest scream in the world on it. Because the scene before, it's me and Jerry outside going, you know, I think you should give him another chance. And he's like, I don't think we're going to do that. And our voices are in this register here. Right? And blah, blah, blah. And then you're just like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and I did it at Warner Brothers and I said, Bob will blow snot out of his nose when he hears it. And he did. He was like, oh, my God. <laughs> this perfect. This, and he, perfect. He, they fired Corey through those barn doors into the track. The sound of him hitting the tractor. Do you remember that? Yes. Thong. We were like, is he okay? Oh, he's insane. I injured myself. There were so, it was like 30 degrees. We're in this barn, concrete. I had to, like, hobble Misha through a 30 door. 30 degrees here is 90 degrees at home. Um, 30 degrees minus Fahrenheit. It, so it's, so it yeah. was like, it was like minus. Michael Bean's photo album. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You. <laughs> That's something I really needed to know. I asked them to let me know. Okay. You were actually, that's what you requested. <laughs> So you were saying, uh, so it was, so it was oh, minus, so was it was minus through, weather. And I had to hit, hit the barn door open with my hip because I'm holding, I told Misha to like really lean on me because so, I wanted it to look real. Like, not all your weight, just enough to make me look. And I wasn't using my hand to open the barn door and, it, and I was like, ow. I'd been like three takes in and I looked and I had sliced open, like not deep, but like I had all these cuts down my hip because the barn door has those wood but it was so cold I couldn't feel it. So I'm slim, it was just that whole episode, I slipped, I hit my head on the floor. Your guy went through barn doors, like everyone was d destroyed that whole It was episode. great fun. And then there was a 12 million geese in a field outside. Because right. that's where they wait on their way, Canada geese on their way to go somewhere. It was like, it they looked like this. They built a house this. on this lake. <laughs> That was, it was a big it was, episode. Good, I mean, huh? Cass went flying out a window in his stunt guy into the middle of the road. I almost ran him over. <laughs> I mean... Oh, the good old days. Good times. It's kind of like being in London. <laughs> my favorite, my favorite thing in the whole series was the end of season eight. Because the end of season eight, we starts with Abaddon, right? And... Uh, she ends up getting burnt to a crisp. I'm tied to a chair. You get the human blood all the way through in the church, all the way through to the angels falling from the sky. Mm. And that was all shot in sequence over three days. And so we, we, we did the exteriors. Yeah, uh, yeah it, was the ex it was the finish of season eight. And the, the exteriors we shot, and it was awful weather. And you know, they were tying things down and stuff's blowing away. And, and then we were in that room for two solid days in the church on set. And we did it in sequence. It was mind-blowing. But it was such a togetherness moment. It was just such, we, we constantly were working together and everybody was there. And it was just a, it was truly a magnificent time. It's, there's so, I wasn't on, I was on the show the whole time, except for those few seasons in the middle. But really, there was so much compressed time in those last few seasons that I was in all the time. Um, there's so many moments, and what you're talking about would happen maybe once or twice an episode where I felt, you know, some more than others, but there was after Mary died and the boys find my empty shell of a body. Just I'm doing nothing. I'm literally dead, lying there. And they're just around me and, like, holding, my, holding me up and, you know, touching my face. And, get, and it felt like my two people that really love me, like my children, were taking care of me. And it was the trust and the working together and, and having a little powwow before the, before the scenes so that we could be like, I'm going to do this and this, and but what if this doesn't work, and why don't you try that? And it was such a group family effort. That was most of the time. That's it really saying. was most of the time. Because yeah. there's never enough time. There's never enough money. Um, you're always up against it. The weather's always fighting you. And... and but there's everybody, everybody on that set, everybody behind the scenes, everybody is all trying to make the best thing that they can make. And that's so much fun to do. It's exhausting, but it's so much fun to do. But less exhausting than if you were trying to drag people along oh. to care and who didn't or who weren't bringing the same level of the game or, no. you know, it just was, and, the, and they'd been there so long. So the fact that 
really the economy of what we could do in an amount of time to the level we could do it was so lucky because the and crew... And they would catch it all. What, 85%? And they would catch yes, yeah. exactly. And 85% of the crew had been there since the second episode. Mm -hmm. You know, so... It just was a very... It was a trust thing. You it. could lean into it. people and people could lean yes. into you. Yes. It's yes. just everybody trying to make something really, really good, which is just a lovely feeling, you know? Many, many, many laughing until my mascara had to be fixed and my but they would, makeup artist is like, stop it! I'm like... <laughs> they wouldn't... Yeah. They try to avoid putting the four of us together. 100%. Most of the time. Listen, when I'm on set and I have Jared or Jensen, I'm fine. You put Jared both and Jensen? On, can and I'm literally Jared, Jensen, like, Misha, and me. That's where you get the I'd rather be slept during sex by a girl in a Zorro mask. 38 takes. 38 takes. A, you know, Jensen doesn't ever screw up lines. Ever. Ever. He never breaks. He made one mistake at the beginning of the line, and Jared jumped on him. For the rest of eternity. 38 takes later, he still couldn't get it out. <laughs> he used that as the interstitial through the season. I'd rather be, damn it! But it was, yeah. That's... Poor Alex. He came in after their skills were honed. Oh, he... Got... Honed. He was and Junior Misha. Misha paid it forward. Yeah, Junior Misha. Because Misha used to get all the flack. Nobody ever did anything to me. You know why? Because I'd sue them. <laughs> I'd ground them so they didn't do it to me. <laughs> like, oh, Shepard's a grown-up. We've got to leave him alone. He wrote something on stupid on the back of my car about, about penises or something. And I was like, you do realize if you scratch the paint, it's going to cost you six grand. That's the only conversation I have with him. Oh, <laughs> but you know, you know when Misha was, was directing? You know when he directed his first episode? They shredded his script three times. They had to hide his keys because they would have done something to him. Uh, Jensen pied him like a gentleman. Full cream pie in the face. From behind on the video, right? Jared hit him so hard with the pie, I think it broke his nose. And it took 45 minutes to clean the setup after he'd done it. And at one point... <clears throat> Jared came to me and went, Producer's hey. like... No, no, no. Jared's like, hey, Shep, uh, how much do you think Misha's car's worth? Less than it's going to cost to fix whatever you've done. Exactly. He was going to put it on a forklift on top of the building or something. It was, just, it was one of those. He told me he filled it with change. Yeah, he did that later, yeah. He, filled, <laughs> he just filled it with change. I mean, Every the only time thing he drove, it was like... Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> And it weighed like 400 tons as a result. <laughs> Terrible on his gas mileage. But yeah, they, 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 it wasn't pranks. It was just, when you work hard, you play hard. And it's funny. It's really... So if it you look at... It was necessary to have those laugh breaks. Um, the scenes were so heavy so much of the time. And, you know, like that same scene I was talking about before with Jeff... We were all crying, and in between takes, we couldn't stop crying, and we wouldn't make eye contact, because if I made in contact with Jensen, we'd both start crying. I couldn't even look at Jeff, and Jared was, like, standing, facing away from us that way. Well, Jeff's got doe eyes. When oh, my God. Up. And he, he added, so he's holding my hands, and he's like, I just, and he goes, my girl, and that was not in the script, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and both, both of the boys, too, were like... <laughs> Yeah, my but, heavy but, stuff, they'd be drinking. Correct. <laughs> but the, the camera guy was crying. The prop people were crying. Everyone was crying. The script, everyone, like, people were like... And then when that happened, we all continued to cry, but now we were laugh crying. They're lying on the floor. I didn't know what had happened. I was holding Jeff's other hand, and he just went... <laughs> and squeezed my hand really hard. And I was like laughing because now I'm seeing Jared rolling here and Jensen's rolling that way. And I'm like, I. And then I realized what happened. And then Jeff finally was able to let go of my hand. And I'm just like, I didn't know whether to, to laugh because it seemed mean. But at the same time, I was really confused and, and crying already. It, we, Just we thank God you weren't Misha because somebody would have been holding a pair of pliers to his nuts. Oh, my God. But it was so necessary, and we were all able yeah. to recover from the heaviness, yeah, that whole work, episode. You work hard, you play hard. Correct. It's the way it is. It's right. the way it is. It's fabulous. What? <laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to you guys for coming because you mean so much to us coming in to these Thank you for having us. Brilliant. 
my, my question is for you. When did you um, have the chance Thursday. To, <laughs> to audition for the position of Crowley? And had you already watched Supernatural before you went for that audition? I was friends with Kim Manners. And Kim, for years, you've got to come do the show. These boys are great, blah, 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 blah. And it, it just it evaded me. And I was working with Kelly Manners of Fox, his brother. And uh, I said, how's Kim doing? And Kim was, was not doing well, and he was in the condos behind Fox. And uh, I decided not to go see him, because he, he and I had a very lively relationship, and I didn't want to embarrass him or make him uncomfortable as he wasn't doing well. I just wanted to leave him with what we already had, rather than me seeing him not doing so well. And he passed. And uh, he passed, and then I got a phone call. It was like, you want to go audition for Supernatural? I'm like, oh, there you go. I thought, I just went, I'm not going to argue with this. And I was supposed to go do one episode. That was one episode. But then he wouldn't leave, so. <laughs> I tried many times. I refused to be a series regular for five years. I remember talking to you about that. Oh, Jesus. It was insane. And then it was just like, but it was, it, it's a magical part of my life. I was going through a really horrible divorce, like a nasty, nasty divorce. And I'll tell you this, everybody knew what a bad mood I was in and how crazy my life was. And yet I, my acting was actually still pretty good. I could focus on that, but it, like I was just this total mess. And they just sort of waited me out. And I, just, I was still there. And I got through what I got through and happy to get through it. And they were like, you done? Great. Come and have, come and have some fun now. You know, it's, it was just like, they just waited till I calmed down and my life got better. And it's, they're very kind people. It's the thing you might not know. I mean, they're, they're funny and they're all sorts of fun and, and very, very good at their jobs. But they're very solid boys. Very, even Misha is actually a bizarrely solid boy. Very grounded in a, in a, in a very interesting way. The families are really strong. They're, they're, they're just good people. And... I, I discovered very quickly that if somebody came to the show that didn't get the show or hadn't done the homework, they would take care of them better than anyone else. They would literally carry them through anything. If somebody wasn't good at something, they would support them to their hills. It was, that was their job. The show is the show, and the show is bigger than anybody. I thought you were, sorry, I no, made no. a gesture like this, meaning where I thought you were going is when somebody didn't toe the line of the kindness and respect no. that was expected. Oh, no, 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 no. no they no. weren't invited back. No, 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 but, but the point is, but, but while they were working on that, they wouldn't come back. Because if you didn't get it and you weren't any good, why the hell would they bring you back? But the truth of it is, it's people that were struggling with the idea of what they were doing were carried They'd get through the support. that. Mm -hmm. They would absolutely bend over backwards to make sure they could get the best performance. Didn't matter how long it took. Didn't matter how much effort it took to do it. And that's one of the reasons why the show is so strong. Because then we found people, the people that you love in the show, are all the people that got it and went, oh, this is something rather magical. And there's a, there's a door here, there's a window here. You've got Ruth, and you've got all these people that came into it. And it's like, wow, there's something really special here. And it's like, you're welcome. Come on in. Make it, make it good for you. Tim Amundsen, everybody that came that added a flavor to it, you know? Because they cared. They yeah. cared about their show. A Always. Lot of, a lot of shows I was on, like, the lead, if they even introduced them to my, to me, themselves to me, if I didn't have a scene with them, or even if I did, was sometimes... It, I, it just wasn't like that. No. They will introduce themselves to anyone. They will help anyone. Even, and me having been on the show a while, even little things, like I'd be in a scene with Jensen and he'd just go. Yeah, just move your head. Meaning your light will be better if you put your chin yeah. up. Like Everybody he, does. Like it. he cares. He's like, I want you to be and look your best. I'm going to help you. And he doesn't have to do that. And who, has to do whoever's that. the funniest gets to tell the joke. That's the bottom line. If you're funny, you're funny. That's it. They tried, as I said, they tried to appoint putting the four of us together at any given moment because we would do some destructive things and it was difficult to corral us doing and we, then silly stuff would happen but what I actually love if you ever want to see what the four when the four of us were together that period of time when it was the four of us um, if you ever want to know what that's really like go watch the Nerd HQ panels that were at, at Comic Con because that's after everybody's done the year's work of, 
of everything, all the press we had. Eight and years everyone's ago. role is really apparent. Right, and, <laughs> and then, you know, we've got all the things we're supposed to do. Me and, me and Misha would do a day, and then they'd come in and clean up the back, back stuff of that. And then we'd finally, everyone was relaxed. They'd had a couple of, couple of drinks. And we'd go on stage with either Zach or Alicia Tyler, and, and it was just insanity. And if you watch those, you will know exactly how fast, how smart, and how funny they really are, which I always think is great. Mark, we, we are coming to no, the No, we're not. We had that extra 10 minutes. It's a, well, I know. This is the usual thing. We're getting Mark off the stage. You can't get me off the stage. I'll tell you, it's an impossibility. Who has a really important... There's a person here in the front who has yeah. a really important question. Shout it out if you haven't got a mic. I'll come to you. Don't get up. I was going to say, if any... Um, of a character, what was in the episodes you could be? What one would you pick? Who the hell would want to be anyone else but Crowley? <laughs> I mean, what's the point? <laughs> Who would you pick to be other than... Well, you wouldn't. It's brilliant. We love... I love all the other characters for who they are and who they became. That's the thing. I mean, I would have loved to have played a character like Abaddon, like fierce and evil and cool, but... First of all, as Mary, I got to play several versions of a person. I even got to play an evil character called Eve as Mary, right? Or Mary as Eve, or whatever that was. I looked like me, acted like her. Um, I got to be sweet Mary in the beginning, who was hiding all this badassery that she knew. Um, ultimately, it's just sort of like an idle daydream because... The casting and the magic of the show, some of the way it worked, I can't imagine anyone being any of the roles that weren't cast as they were. Like, they just somehow, I think that they cast really well and then they wrote to the person. So, you know, Dean became more and more Jensen and Sam became more and more Jared and Mary became more and more me um, Mine was eight years of people competing to find something funny to write. It was it was it was so much fun for right. that reason. And and I mean Jody became more Kim, like, yep. and and it became like this, right? So Mary lives in me. All versions. It's of a her. part. It's a part of us. Mm -hmm. It really is a part. Especially for so many years. And so it's weird to think about playing somebody else because that is somebody else. I can much more easily tell you who I'd play on a different show than I. Can yeah, that's on, more. They're going to they're gonna wrap us up. Is there anything you'd like to tell these wonderful people? <laughs> so many things, but just thank you. I mean, I can't believe you're all still here. Not just this hour. I mean, in, in the general sense. I, it's, um, it's hard to wrap our heads around. And if anyone could explain why or how, um, they, I mean, they can't or they would. And and I love that people are jealous of us, of our of us, yeah, all of us, Absolutely. of what we have. Look, it's it's special. Uh, you know, this is the show, the little show that could. It's got millions and millions of supernatural family. We hate the word fans, fanatic, something negative. To 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 have causes and things that we've cared about. Doesn't matter who in the cast, right? To have people come in behind that and make it a hundred times bigger, a thousand times bigger, a and million times bigger, and understand it and support and it, support it to um, the team. organically and 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 on their own. Not I think just... I think it's because the show always spoke to the most fundamental of principles about family, loyalty, and loyalty, looking after each other, good and evil, Doing the right. simplest simplest versions of good and evil, which which makes mm -hmm. the Crowley and Castiel things funny because they're always in this dichotomy of what's right and what's wrong. But that's the thing, and to see you guys coming together behind what we do and supporting each other is the most magical thing. So, you know, as I said, it's a tough world out there. It's a really, really rough, mean world out there. And to see you guys here, you know, sharing, caring, and loving each other. Love is the only answer to any of this crap. And it, it, it's wonderful to be able to participate in something that's kind and loving and, and caring. And, you know, we are 
we're joyous people. We love what we've done. We we enjoy each other. We we enjoy all of each other. We're all we're all different. And we've all got different personalities, but we all care very very much about each other. And don't ever think we don't care about you. We really really do. You've made such a difference. This show would have been cancelled in five years if it hadn't been for you guys. And it's never going to end. I mean, I'm looking at kids who, who weren't around when it came out. And you now know? they're on season two. And they're on season two. No, that was last week. They're on season seven now. <laughs> but it, it's, it's, a, it's a magical thing. And I hope it feels like a sort of, in a very difficult world, a, a really positive movement for caring and change and love. It's it's. It's kind of an excuse to be nice to each other, using using supernatural as a backbone for that. You know what I mean? It's a conduit. Yeah, it's a conduit. We're pr we're proud of that. Sure we are so rich. proud of that. And if I promise you, if you're having a hard time and it is a harsh time right now, please reach out. You know, I'm sober a long time. We're all very public about our mental health issues and and, and our and our other issues that we've had, and we talk about it a lot. But you are not alone, and please don't suffer alone. Don't think. Uh, you are unique in any shape or form. The great news is, is there are people just like you who maybe can help you find a way through. So, you know, put your hand out. If you see somebody struggling, ask them how they're doing. Care about them right now because it's really damn important. Well, it's Comic-Con. Can you show your love how much we love Samantha Smith and Mark Shepard?